Hello everyone and welcome to the Media Valley Tech Lab. It's my pleasure to introduce the session speaker, Carly Hill. Over to you, Carly. Awesome, thanks Millie. Um, hi everyone and welcome to this session. I'm Carly Hill. I am the Senior Manager of Content Strategy at Media Valley. And today I'm gonna to take you through 10 tips to maximize the impact of your jam. Now, of course, we only have 20 minutes to cover all 10 tips. So this is really gonna be a bit more of a power session to really try to get your damn strategy wheels turning. All right, obviously there are a ton of different ways to improve the impact of your dam. So today I'm really gonna focus on tips covering the following three areas. First is breaking down barriers between potential users and your dam, accelerating workflows when working with your digital assets, and identifying new use cases that could be opened up by storing new asset types. All right, so the first section is on tips that you can implement to break down any barriers that are preventing extended teams from getting the most value out of your dam. When everyone is able to use the dam as well as your assets well, you can really help to reduce friction, improve brand alignment and speed up time to market. All right, so the first tip is to identify dam champions. These are representatives within each of your teams, maybe your departments. It's really easy to work in isolation as a dam manager, but having dam champions can really help provide insight into the value and the use cases for each different team. Having someone that's within each group can also help to shape your metadata and build a taxonomy that makes sense for that specific team. We have a customer that has dam champions in each of their departments who provide keywords for their specific set of assets. Then the dam manager will go in and they'll approve those keywords. So you're really able to learn more about that team's language and be able to keyword more effectively for them in the future. Uh, this process has actually also allowed them to identify new use cases that would be improved just by creating a few new custom attributes or approaching keywords in a different way. A secondary benefit of dam champions is that they can be a main point of contact for your end users. So this is something that can help share information such as new feature releases from your vendor, answer questions, and then also filter feedback between your end users and then you as the DAM manager. Using DAM champions during both the initial setup as well as, a, as an, on, an ongoing basis can really help to optimize the DAM to each unique use case and really maximize the value that each of your users can get from the DAM. Another area that's sometimes left untapped uh, by DAM users is connecting your external users with the DAM. And there are two main approaches to this. First is using something like a branded portal and creating a specific portal for each agency or partner where you can really populate it with the assets for their specific campaign. This approach ensures that your external users can access and download the assets need, that they need without needing to specifically request them over and over again. Uh, we even at Media Valley recently released a category syncing feature with our branded portal so that it will auto update as you add or update assets within a specific category. The next level to this is to actually make them a full time user of the dam. What's great about this approach is that using permissions, you can really limit category availability and functionality to what's relevant to each specific partner. And then when working with an agency, for example, you can also provide upload capabilities giving you instant access to and ownership of your final assets. Connecting your external users with your DAM can really reduce some of those barriers when collaborating with contractors outside of your organization or distributing those final files to distributors, franchisees, and more. As mentioned as well, when setting up your agency as a user, it also ensures that your final assets are upload direct, uploaded directly to your own DAM where you can have ownership over and control over them immediately. All right, one of the biggest barriers to adoption is when users don't understand how to use the dam, or equally as important, how to use it to make their own daily lives easier. Providing customized training to new employees, as well as refreshers to existing dam users, can ensure that everyone feels confident and inspired to use the dam as part of their day to day workflow. In addition to covering specific features, it's also important to cover the benefits specific to their team, as well as how a dam can address certain scenarios that they could see within their own specific role. Making training part of a regular cadence can make a huge difference in the adoption of your dam. 
And depending on the vendor's pricing structure or support structure, you can either take this on internally or use their resources to train your users. Media Valet, for example, provides unlimited training as part of the enterprise subscription. So in that case, it would make more sense to use our resources versus your own. All right, now, of course, a lot of our tips to this point have been centered around adding a ton of users. And with that, of course, comes the need to actually manage each one of those users, as well as their permissions. For those managing a lot of users, especially if the entire organization has access to the DAM, we usually recommend connecting with your single sign-on solution. So things like Okta, Azure, Google, the benefits of these are twofold. First is to the users themselves. I think everyone at some point has experienced the frustration of managing dozens of passwords across dozens of platforms. Integrating your DAM with SSO allows users to sign into the DAM with their pre-existing password without needing to worry about creating, managing, and remembering yet another one. The even bigger picture of this is that you're able to manage users at a greater scale without compromising on your asset security. When companies integrate their DAM with SSO, user management is usually handled at that IT level. This ensures that all new employees are assigned the correct permissions right from the start and that they're properly removed from the system when they move on to a new opportunity. All right, so next we're gonna cover a few tips to help you accelerate your workloads. Not only can these tips help get your assets to market faster, they can also help you to boost the ROI of those assets by maximizing the use of what you have. One of the key foundations of accelerating workloads is establishing the right metadata to make using your assets seamless. It's always a given to ensure your assets are tagged with keywords and that the embedded metadata is always tracked within the DAM, but not all manufacturers take advantage of the custom attribute capabilities available to them. Custom attributes allow you to assign metadata to a specific label. For example, identifying a photographer. That way, when an asset is tagged with Jill Kozak, for example, people using the asset aren't left wondering, is that the name of the model? Is it the photographer? Or is it someone else entirely? They can also be used to map more complex, long-form details, things like ingredients, assembly directions, dates, and more. These are all very common use cases in the manufacturing space. Even when organizations are using custom attributes, not everyone sees the value in creating them for something as e that is so easily identifiable as a keyword. So for example, something like a SKU. The key difference between using a custom attribute versus adding something as a keyword is that you're able to better map it when connecting with other solutions. For example, when integrating with something like a PIM, if things are properly mapped to attributes, you can set up a call to grab the metadata from that specific attribute. With keywords, on the other hand, it's usually an all or nothing pull or push with no easy way to candy pick which keyword you want to pull. Secondary to this is the enhanced filtering that comes with using custom attributes. Most DAM solutions will have some sort of filtering module where you can further narrow down your search results after that initial search. Custom attributes give you additional information that you can filter by rather, rather than needing to create a super long uh, search query to find the result that you need. Finally, taking this approach can really help with metadata governance. Consider, for example, that you were tasked with keywording the country of manufacturing. Would you say United States? Would you say USA? Would you say the United States? Custom attributes remove, remove the decision making from some keywording with tools like drop downs and multi select lists. All right, once you have a strong metadata structure in place, Another great way to accelerate your workflows is through integration. When integrating your DAM and your assets with the solutions that your team loves, the goal really should be making grabbing assets from your DAM as simple as doing so from your desktop. Not only does this create a smoother and more pleasant experience, it also saves your users a ton of time from needing to download and re-upload assets between the platforms. There are a few in particular that are really valuable in the manufacturing space. The first is with your project management software. So that's something like Rike, Monday.com, or Asana. Connecting with this type of platform connects your assets with your predefined workflows and projects, allowing users to pull source files into tests and then submit final assets back to your DAM for distribution. This ensures that everyone is always working with the most up-to-date assets. 
It can also be really handy when you frequently update content. So things like brochures or advertisements, because you're able to pull those final files back into your project management solution, either to reference or to reuse. Next is productivity software, something like Office 365. This integration is really one of my top recommendations if you are using a DAM organization wide. Everyone is usually pretty well versed in programs like Word, PowerPoint, and Outlook. So being able to access on-brand content without needing to learn how to use the DAM specifically can really be a game changer in improving adoption and brand consistency. Finally, as mentioned in the slide before, PIM integrations can provide a huge opportunity for manufacturers to connect their product information with their assets and vice versa. This can be one of the most powerful integrations. It enables your PIM and your DAM to both act as stronger sources of truth, and it also empowers the users of both programs to distribute with confidence, either manually or through other integrations into other solutions. If you're curious to learn more about how PIM and DAM work together, uh, we'll actually be hosting another session with Henry Stewart in May to cover this exact topic. Now, while there are a ton of common ones that we see that we covered. Obviously, this isn't a definitive list, and there are a ton of other integration options out there. Things like CMS, like CRM, social media software. The best thing that you can do is to analyze where there's gaps in your own workflows and who you really want using the DAM consistently. And that can really shed some light onto which integrations will bring the most value. The next step that I want to take you through is around opening opportunities for reuse, specifically around approaching your metadata and your taxonomy to actually encourage that reuse. When approaching your category structure and the permissions around who can access each category, consider how certain source or design files could be reused for other initiatives. For example, something like B-roll from a video ad could be repurposed for social media campaigns or design files from past campaigns can be pulled by the design team to tailor into something new. This isn't to say that you should just open up access to all categories for everyone, but rather take advantage of multi-categorization to categorize the assets into that department or that project specific category, as well as other categories that would be relevant to the wider audience that could get value out of reusing that asset. Next is ensuring the discoverability of these assets outside of the context of the original project. While you can keyword manually, I always highly encourage, encourage supplementing manual keywording with AI features, things like image, video, and audio intelligence. AI is just able to tag things without bias in a way that many humans can't, especially if those humans were part of that initial pro project. AI-specific features like object detection, text recognition, and transcription really help to bring these assets to the forefront, even decades down the line. The last piece of the puzzle here is on ensuring that asset rights are captured. There is no real value in making these assets available and discoverable if people are nervous or they're unsure of if they're able to use it without repercussion. Be sure that it's clear when something is approved for free use to really maximize the reuse of assets that may be a little bit more ambiguous. So things like photography, for example. Providing this discoverability, accessibility, and clarity around asset reuse can really work wonders in maximizing the impact of your dam. The last section that I'm going to take you through covers a few different asset types that you may want to consider managing in the dam, if of course you are, aren't already doing so. When you consider storing these extended asset types, you can really open up new use cases and opportunities, further maximizing the impact of your dam. The first is video. Many organizations, including those in the manufacturing space, really stick to organizing static assets in their dam. Things like photos, documents, graphics, with video really taking more of a back burner. But as video becomes more demanded in the market, it's becoming more critical to ensure that this high value and sometimes very expensive asset type is secured and also usable. While it's always an option to store them somewhere locally, there are a few key benefits in storing them in a cloud-based dam. The first two are accessibility and in-app previewing. I've worked with customers that have transitioned their video content from their server to their dam, and one of the biggest pain points that I've seen them highlight is the bandwidth required to access videos from their shared server. Sometimes, you know, only to find that it's the completely wrong video. Not only does a cloud-based dam make your video content accessible from anywhere in the world, 
With in-app previewing, users can download the asset from the cloud with certainty that it is the correct video, or they can even access, reference, and share the video from the, within the DAM directly, which is, of course, another major benefit. Video also has the same common pain points of static assets, namely that they can be near impossible to find in traditional storage solutions and folders. Storing them in a DAM provides additional opportunities for tagging and filtering to really help make them more easily discoverable. Taking it even that one step further, video intelligence can provide transcripts and time-specific tags to really help pinpoint those exact moments within long-form video. Managing your video content in a DAM, whether it's your product videos, um, tutorials, social campaigns, or anything else really, can help you take control of your video and ensure that it's always available, it's always used, and it's always preserved. Another file type to consider is design files. So things like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, or Sketch files. Storing these assets within your DAM can help really accelerate the creative process and enable your team to bring more assets to market at a faster rate. There are a ton of benefits to this approach, but I'm gonna highlight two today. First, continually saving work in progress files to the DAM ensures that the most up-to-date version is always easily accessible. This can be really helpful when files often need to be passed from designer to designer as part of a workflow, or for example, if someone is out sick or they're on vacation. It can also act as a really helpful backup in case of something like a computer crash or similar situations. Second, storing final design files allows them to be refreshed and used as templates for future projects, even if it is years down the line. This is not only beneficial just for maximizing asset ROI, but it also means that your designers don't need to just recreate the wheel over and over again, even when working on super similar projects. These benefits are only increased when your DAM is integrated with creative software. Integration allows your teams to pull on-brand approved assets into their design file, ensuring brand consistency and also enabling instant linking between the DAM and the design file. This means that the assets don't need to be relinked if the designer grabs a file down the line. Once a project is complete, designers are also able to save their WIP, source, and final assets back to the DAM, all from their own desktop. It can really help reduce some of those friction points that designers experience when working with a DAM. The last tip of the day and the last file type that I'm gonna highlight is 3D models. Now I'm gonna put out a bit of a disclaimer that the points that I'm gonna make are really only for DAMs that can actually preview the files within the DAM rather than those that just store them unsupported. Of course, adding this type of asset to the DAM allows you to take advantage of that core DAM functionality, things like accessibility, keywording, categorization, but the benefits are so much more than that. A large pain point when collaborating on something like a 3D file, whether it's internally or sharing with a client, is that it usually requires having a 3D viewer, which I'm sure a lot on the call can relate, many people don't have. Being able to preview 3D files directly within your DAM, being able to rotate it, expand it, preview measurements, and even more importantly, share these capabilities with coworkers and partners can reduce a significant amount of the pain points experienced when collaborating on 3D files. An added benefit is that it can actually also help you save a little bit of money. Because all your DAM users will be able to preview the 3D models within the DAM, many won't actually need the licenses to that specialized software. 3D files is really a file type that can be frequently forgotten about, but it can really boost the impact of your DAM and open up new opportunities for use, uh, for use cases. All right, and I wanted to end today's presentation just with a quick slide that shares all of the 10 tips from today, both to remind you of what was covered but also, if there are a few that spark some inspiration, you can take the opportunity to screenshot this slide if you want, there's any that you want to remember for later. Of course, taking on all these tips at once can be a pretty major undertaking, but even if you pick just one or two that are most relevant to your specific use case, you can see major increases in the impact of your DAM. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. I hope you were able to take at least one or two of these tips covered today and use them to help maximize the impact of your DAM initiative. If you have any questions about today's session or if you'd just like to connect, please send me an email or connect with me on LinkedIn. You're also able to visit the Media Valley booth in the ex exhibition tab. All right, have a great day, everyone.